they reveal a 40 million year old ocean monster, Bacillosaurus. This five and a half ton prehistoric whale terrorized the oceans for millions of years. Where did it come from? And how is it related to its modern counterparts? It's a really, really big animal with really big, powerful teeth. Kind of to decode the secrets of Bacillosaurus, we will see this lost beast like never before, flying inside skin and bone. We'll resurrect its vanished world and reveal how Bacillosaurus came to rule the oceans. We have been unearthing amazing stuff from here. One of the most important discoveries so far uh, for my team was a plant eater dinosaur that lived here in Egypt 70 million years ago. Beneath Egypt's shifting sands, Hesham and his team are discovering evidence of a time when dinosaurs once dominated this land. But at Wadi al Hitan, in deposits formed 26 million years after the dinosaurs went extinct, lie the remains of a truly mysterious beast. This was a really huge animal uh, lived here in Wadi Khitan a long time ago. It was this kind of like 18 meter long, it's starting from the tip of the nose till the tip of the tail. Investigators first discovered the remains of this enormous animal in 1832. It was unlike anything they'd ever seen. At the beginning, they thought this is kind of like a weird lizard. This is why they gave it Saurus, the Greek name for lizard. The discoverers named the beast Bacillosaurus, meaning King Lizard. Lifting up Bacillosaurus's bones from the desert reveals an animal that resembles a mythical beast. 67 gigantic vertebrae form a monstrous snake-like body longer than a train carriage. But the arches on the vertebra are nothing like those of a serpent. They look more like those of a mammal, one that lived in water. Bacillosaurus was really a prehistoric whale, the largest marine animal of its day. So why were its bones buried in the middle of a desert, more than a hundred miles from the nearest sea? Today, Wadi al Hattan lies just south of Cairo, more than a hundred miles away from the Mediterranean Sea. 40 million years ago, most of Egypt was covered by an ancient ocean called the Tethys Sea. Wadi al Hattan was beneath the waters of a sheltered coastal bay, the perfect environment for Bacillosaurus to thrive. One discovery from the site is transforming our understanding of prehistoric whales. What we're looking at is the Bacillosaurus arm. It's uh, typically like human arm, composed of the shoulder blades and the humerus, and this is the radius, and the five fingers like us. Experts think Bacillosaurus used its front limbs to help it swim, just as modern whales do. But at its rear, it was a very different beast. For many years, the scientists thought that Bacillosaurus had only two front limbs. All of a sudden, they found the Bacillosaurus had legs. It was a big deal in science. Unlike any modern whale, Bacillosaurus had external hind limbs. The discovery sends shockwaves through the scientific world. Why did this ancient whale have legs? So we have the hind limbs of the Bacillosaurus. You can see this femur, it's not well developed. And this is the tibia and fibula and the, the ankle bone. The legs of Bacillosaurus could bend and extend like humans, which is the first step towards walking. But to lift a body this large off the ground, the pelvis must be directly attached 
to the massive spinal column. You cannot see any place for the attachment between the vertebral column and the pelvis right here. So it's totally not attached. This leg is not for walking. Scans confirmed that Bacillosaurus's legs were too weak for walking. They wouldn't have helped it swim either. They were far too small to propel a giant like this through the water. Hessian believes there is only one explanation for these mysterious limbs. They are an evolutionary hangover. The hind limbs actually play a crucial role in the whale evolution. And it's actually a remnant from the hind limb of the ancient whale. Basilosaurus may never have walked, but it had ancestors who did. Who were they? Where did this prehistoric whale come from? The story of whale evolution is one of the strangest in the natural world. 400 million years ago, most life was still in the ocean where it had first developed, and fish swam with a side-to-side -side motion. Over time, some species left the water and learned to live and walk on land. When they developed into mammals, their spines evolved to move up and down as they ran. Then 50 million years ago, a group of deer-like mammals returned to the water. Their hind legs disappeared, and their tails developed flukes for propulsion. But to this day, a whale's spine still moves as if it's galloping, just as their ancestors once did on land. Steve thinks there's a clue to the origin of Bacillosaurus, hidden inside its skull. It resembles that of a crocodile, but double the size. Its nostrils have fused and moved up the head, closer to where modern whales have their blowholes. Its brain probably weighed only two and a half kilograms, which means it was smaller than the brains of today's whales. And tucked away under the skull, it had a bony shell called the bulla, which contained the inner ear. It bears a striking resemblance to the bulla of a prehistoric land animal found on the other side of the Tethys Sea in Pakistan, called Pachycetus. Outwardly, Pachycetus was a classic land mammal with four strong legs which allowed it to walk on land. But the shape of its bulla links it with Bacillosaurus. This thing here is a bulla bone of a modern day whale. And the bulla bones of whales are really distinctive. Their bullas are really thick and really robust and really dense, and especially the rims here. And that helps them hear better underwater. Now what's really intriguing is that we see these thicker bullas with these thick rims in Pachycetus. So that tells us Pachycetus was a walking whale. Pachycetus's remains predate Bacillosaurus by nearly 10 million years. While they were still only around one and a half meters long, they had begun to develop the distinctive underwater hearing apparatus of a true whale. But did Pachycetus ever go into the water? is Pachycetus skull from above. And you can see here are the eyes. And those eyes, they would have been on the top of the skull a little bit so they could peek out. So if this animal was in the water, the eyes could see above the water a little bit, kind of like a crocodile and kind of like this hippo here. And so this was an animal that was at home on land, at home in the water. This is Eumycetus anubis. We have nearly complete skull. The whale fossils found in Pakistan are the oldest ever discovered. For Eumycetus anubis is one of the most primitive whales ever found in Egypt. It could be a missing link in the whale family tree. We can say for Eumycetus anubis were uh, preying on turtles and sea cows and large fishes, maybe also other whales. The early seafaring whales, like Anubis, evolved to eat far larger prey than their freshwater ancestors did. By entering the oceans, they unlocked the world's biggest pantry. 
paving the way for the likes of Basilosaurus. How did Basilosaurus rise to become the apex predator of the oceans? Basilosaurus was a ruthless hunter that targeted young whales. To find out how it tackled its prey, Joy Reidenberg compares its teeth with those of its modern counterparts. If we want to compare Basilosaurus to a modern whale, it would have to be the tooth whales. But if you look at most of the modern tooth whales, they're relatively small, like dolphins. So it's not really a very good comparison to Basilosaurus because they're eating very small fish. Most tooth whales hunt on much smaller prey than Basilosaurus did. But one species is a clear match. The closest to a Basilosaurus would probably be the killer whale, which is one of the few species of whales that hunt other whales. This is a skull of Basilosaurus. And what we notice is it has four different types of teeth in its mouth. That's very different from modern whales, which all have the same kind of teeth. If we look at the shape of the back teeth, we notice that they're very different. They have multiple cusps and they overlap each other, which means that they may have used them for processing their food. Basilosaurus could have used its front teeth to tear chunks from its living prey. Further evidence of their hunting techniques comes from a remarkable find. A hole of juvenile Dorodon skulls. When researchers compared these marks to Basilosaurus teeth, they were a perfect match. It looks like Basilosaurus attacked from the side and chomped down hard to disable the Dorodon before feasting on its flesh. Basilosaurus's ferocious hunting tactics took it to the top of the ocean food chain. But if it was such a skilled hunter, why is there no Basilosaurus swimming around today? 34 million years ago, Earth begins to cool. As water freezes into ice, sea levels drop. The Tethys Sea retreats from modern Egypt. And Wadi al hitan is no longer underwater. Experts believe the sudden shift in climate contributed to Basilosaurus' extinction. The scientists have said that the asymmetrical skull of Basilosaurus that's actually inherited to the modern uh, toothed whale as well. Basilosaurus's lopsided skull gave it directional hearing underwater, the first step on the path to echolocation. Egypt's ocean beer moths may now be a thing of the past. Basilosaurus records that moment in whale evolution where whales left the land behind and went all in for living in the water. It is an animal that if we saw it today, we would recognize it as a whale, a real whale. Not a transitional whale, not an ancestral whale, but a full-on whale. And it's thanks to ancient species like Basilosaurus, the prehistoric colossus, expert swimmer, and fearsome hunter, that we have the majestic ocean giants that we know today.